Hi guys, this is the Hot Toys Civil War Winter Soldier review. Okay, so this will be more of another comparison video. And, uh, okay, so I put them both on similar stands so that you can see height differences and whatnot. Um, right now his, his legs are a little bit more bent, so I'll change that. But, um, this is, this is a hard figure to judge because it's extremely plain. So, if you're interested in the Winter Soldier it's himself, um, the older version is the one you want. The Winter Soldier version is the one you want. The costume is cooler. Um, you get, it comes with a face mask. The gun, the gun looks cool. It doesn't come with a sniper rifle, but neither does the new version. Um, the arm is not as shiny, which could bother you. Maybe not. But this one has a lot of, um, it's not user friendly. This one is, the old one is not user friendly at all. And so I'm actually happy to see it like hide back in my shelf in a static pose for her and ever. Um, and I'll go through some reasons why. Number one, the head swaps on these. This head is such a pain to get on. You have to um, warm up the head you know however however you want to do it but it's a pain and um, I will not miss doing that um, the buttons were coming off left and right so as you can see I'm missing some of the buttons there's one but one two three missing anytime you handle this figure you, you expect something to go wrong um, so this strap came loose I glued it back but then some of the glue faded you can see it a little bit there um, that's actually not that big a deal, but still annoying. Um, one thing I love was the silver accents that he has on his costume. And I wish that the, the new figure had more of those, but it doesn't. I really do like the costume better. Um, he doesn't come with hands to hold a shield, last I checked. Um, I prefer... He does actually, but it, it's it's with the metal arm and like... I wanted. I like to pose him without the holding the shield on this side, so that you can also see the metal arm. That that Winter Soldier shield that Hot Toys put out. That's the gray one, which I have. Um, that's one of my favorites. It looks great with the Winter Soldier. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have him hold that later. Um, but yeah, then the other nitpick is the belt is cool. I like the belt. Now, some of the uh, compartments, the lids are coming off. I used Gorilla Glue. It won't stick. I don't know what I need. Um, you know, he's armed to the teeth. It's so cool. But look at that silver accent. I love that. But this thing comes off so easy. Super easy. So anytime you pose him, anytime you touch him, stuff is just falling off him constantly. So annoying. Um, his boots are like super high tech. I might even switch those out, to be honest. I'm going to keep both figures. This is not one I'm going to sell just because I like the costume so much and he's a villain. But, um, yeah, this guy is going to need some beefing up. So, um, just talking costume, he's wearing a black jacket and black pants and black boots. And they all have, like, designs on them, but he's really got nothing on him. Um, yeah, and because of, which this isn't Hot Toys' fault, but because there's a sleeve missing, I think the jacket tends to be pulled a little to that side, so it looks like it like bunches up. But you know that's fine. That's not their. That's not Hot Toys' fault. That's the design um, that the movie had. So looking at metal arm to metal arm, if you can't tell which one is better then just buy which one you like more because you it won't matter but there's one that's clearly better here and so I'm pretty happy about that it's a nice upgrade um, and okay I, I mentioned this on the Sideshow Freaks forum one time and I caught a lot of crap for it and I'll, I'm just gonna put it out there again just because this is my opinion and whatever but um, I think Sebastian Stan has a weird face and I think and the reason is, if you guys uh, aren't aware, um, I do a lot of artwork. I do it on uh, my Instagram. You can see some of it, Agent Batman. 
is my Instagram account and I put a lot of like superhero Star Wars art that I do um, you know from time to time most of it's just action figure photos but um, so from I, I draw a lot of faces I'm really good with likenesses and um, he's got a weird face and part of it is because he's got a super strong jawline but it's somewhat deceiving because it's actually not that strong it's just outward but um, it's not the full like if you look at uh, like UFC fighter Brian Stan if you look at that guy's jaw that's not what Sebastian Stan has although it seems like he does because he it does a, a protrude his jawline does protrude a lot um, and then you and then he's got this big forehead which if you look at pictures of him online with short hair you don't notice as much he, he kinda has a big head but it's not um, it's not noticeable but when you have the parted hair it, it, it does reveal a longer forehead um, which is which is odd because it throws, a, it throws off the likeness and the length of the face if you're an artist it's hard to capture that and so um, he I, I think people have trouble now he has you know when you do likenesses his eyes it's the eyes and the mouth first that are the most important in my opinion and then it's the nose and the face shape and then the rest of the details you still have to get but um, you can get by and then if there's like unique details obviously like the long hair and the metal arm you go oh that's winter soldier but looking just at his face when you're looking just at his face. So I, I think that this is another case where Hot Toys has stylized the sculpt. In other words, they've made him look buffer and stronger than he normally is. Um, another uh, example of this would be um, Star-Lord, Chris Pratt's face. It's a little too chiseled. He's, he, he was in shape for that movie, but he had like a boyish charm about him. And uh, the the sculpt didn't fig didn't um, capture that as well because it, the jawline was too strong and that's that's kind of a problem. But you're making superhero figures, so um, fine. But I do buy these for the likeness. Um, also, Sebastian Stan has one of those faces. Well, so the point I was getting to before is he's got a lot of uh, unique details in his face, like his eyes are di are very unique, his lips are unique, his face shape is unique, his forehead is unique. His nose is not, but his lips are. Um, and by unique, I mean unique in a way in that if you don't draw it right, it doesn't look like him. And um, I think that none of these features really blend well together. You can sort of get away with other people, like um, Chris Hemsworth. If you draw him with a chiseled jaw, it's still going to look like him as long as you add the beard and you capture that eye shape he has on his eyebrows. And he has sort of like a camel nose. Um, you, you capture that and, and you've got him. But with Sebastian Stan, it's a lot of unique parts that aren't necessarily uh, better than the sum. And um, so that's not saying that I'm, I don't, I'm not saying he's an ugly guy. I'm just saying that the likeness is hard to capture. And I think the long hair makes it worse. It's about time for Bucky to get his hair cut. I don't get if he was on the run, why wouldn't he cut his hair? Because everyone saw him with the long hair. He's got to cut the hair. I, you know. I'm looking forward to him having short hair. It's got to be happening in the next movie or the Black Panther movie. Something. The hair's got to go. You know, we've had two figures with it. I think it's enough. Um, so now I'm trying to think, like, his, his face looks different. He's got one of those faces that looks different um, in, in, from different angles. So if you look at the scene where uh, Captain America finds him in his apartment, his jawline does not look strong at all. In fact, he looks kind of chubby and like fat and um, weak chin, you know. Um, but then you look at, and I think the likeness is the most here when Ant Man is talking about how he has a has he has another move and it's, he's going to become Giant Man, and uh, Captain and Bucky are, are talking to each other. In that scene, his likeness looks a lot like this. I would say it looks a lot like this, like the figure. Um, but then you look at the final scene when Tony calls him the Manchurian Candidate. Um, you can see that he's got a big forehead and his, his, lower, um, the, his lower face is narrow despite the protruding jawline. So um, this isn't that. 
And I think that's what he looks like most of the time. Now, if you look at this picture back here, you can sort of see what I'm talking about. Look, look how narrow his jawline is when his chin comes to a point. It's, it's not like a Brad Pitt jawline. It's narrow. It's narrow. And he's a little pretty. I think that is a much better likeness to Sebastian Stan than this figure is. This guy is pretty damn tough. Now, uh, I, I, I picture the helicopter scene when he's like looking at Captain as he's holding on to the helicopter. Um, even then, his face was, was thinner. It was thinner. And if you look at like the behind the scene photos of Sebastian Stan in costume, his head looks tiny on top of this like giant body, this giant costume that they have him wearing. And he looks like he beefed up his shoulders for the role and things like that. His head looks small. He has a small jawline. And this figure does not have that. Um, now let's compare it to this head. By the way, the head on this one is also pain because maybe it's just me, but the neck was loose and the ball joint kept moving and the jacket sort of gets in the way. I had to unzip the jacket to get the head back on because he comes with like a plastic wrap over his neck that I had to remove. So it's just like a constant thing with these with these heads that are just like, I don't know, pain. Um, okay. So this head. Let's see it. I think they got... Huh. Let's see. I think they got the jawline a little bit better here, except the chin is too long. Chin is definitely too long. He has a small chin. Um, <laughs> I was never a fan of this head sculpt. And like I said, the eyes are really important, and they've sort of blacked the eyes out. So you can't really say, but the brow ridge doesn't look right to me, if you ask me. I think the brow ridge is better on the newer version. Also, this head seems a little bit thicker in the crown of the head than the Winter Soldier one. Um, I'm going to swap the heads just so you guys get the, because I'm curious myself. But the hair is more brown on this version, and the new version is black. Um, so I'm going to swap the heads. Let's see how they look. So I tried to pull the head off, and this happened. I'll work on it. Hang on. Okay, the verdict here is that the neck is way, is definitely not long enough, and um, yep, he looks stupid. So, okay, this looks pretty cool, but the hair is too big. I have an idea. I'll be right back. Okay, so the hair was making it difficult to fit, and I had this knockoff head um, that had rooted hair. Doesn't look as it doesn't look as good as the Hot Toys version, but the hair is rooted. I don't know. What do you guys think? The mask is a plus. I'm gonna put the other head back on. Okay. I think I think I'm gonna go with this. If you notice, I had to lower the jacket. But that is a much cooler look. Um, and then if you were planning on swapping the heads, I think you need a plan B because this looks terrible. <laughs> the neck is just too long, the neck peg. So you can swap the neck peg and that might make it shorter. But yeah, that's not going to work. So, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um... Now that's the stuff. All right, let's zoom in on him. I'll take it. This is cool. To be completely honest, this is a pretty plain figure. Pretty plain figure. Um, one thing that was odd was that his boots came sort of like half-assed, uh, tucked in. Like they were tucked in, but not really. I don't know if Hot Toys did that by intention, but they moved around and, and it looked weird, so I had to tuck them in. And you can see that the um, this side came out already, but um, I tucked in that side. That was weird. So like I said, there's nothing on his pants. I'm considering considering swapping the pants. This one is more black. I'm not sure if this is just like faded. I don't think it is because my figures don't aren't really in the sun ever um, I think it just that's just the black that they put on 
then again, I don't care so much about that, but I do care about um, this belt, the belt here, this utility belt with the knives. If I could figure out how to keep that thing glued, if someone in the comments can tell me what do you use to, to keep that shut, um, and I would ditch all these little pistols and stuff, although I like them, they are a nightmare to deal with. Um, oh, this, this is connected to that. Oh man, that may not work. I'm telling you, those pistols are not worth it. Like, they just constantly fall. Um, now, I am going to spice this figure up a little bit. And what I mean is, I bought the Winter Soldier harness. And I'm probably going to paint it black when it gets here. And I bought the shield. Um, the shield carrier, holder, whatever it is. And so, I'm going to put the harness, and I'm probably going to put that steel shield on his back because it looks cool. Um, let me let me put that shield on him so you can see how it looks. There he is with the shield. Um, it's The shield is not as chrome as the arm, obviously, so that doesn't work as well. It worked better with that figure, but, um, oh well. I still like the shield. So what I'm probably going to do is have him just wear it on his back, more likely, and carry the gun. Now, the, as I tried to put this on, that part of the shield broke. This is nothing new for the Captain America shields. They all suck their weak points. Um, but I just hold it at that angle. So I probably will replace it just because I can't hold it. He can't hold it. There he goes. Well, whatever. So I used I used that hand. If anyone was wondering. It's, it's kind of oversized and it worked. So um, he looks cool. I know it's not screen accurate, but... Um, I need him to have something. He's got to he's got to have something. And I have to maybe buy a utility belt for him. Yeah, I don't know. But um I'm definitely keeping the head. I'm definitely keeping the shield. However, I end up holding him. Um the only thing left is the gun. One thing I should mention though, um oh, actually I'm going to switch the boots too. But one thing I should mention is that this jacket keeps pushing up the hair, so there's that little joint here. And um, it's fine as long as you keep an eye on it, but it can push the hair up if you fuss around with the jacket too much. So that could be annoying. It's not working. Try to focus it. That little hair crease. I wish it wasn't there. I rarely ever use the goggles. Alright. So there he is with the other boots on. They're not as black. Um, they sort of match the jacket more. I'm not sure. I'm not sure how I feel about them yet. I'll leave them on for a few days and see what I think. They're, they have some wear, like they're a little bit dirty and cracked at the, at the feet. Um, but they have the silver accents. They seem a little too puffy now. Hmm, not sure. But I do like the shield and the mask. Those are definitely staying. A couple things about the figure. Um, it's a plain looking box for sure. He's got he's got the hands, the grasping hands. Like the one that he uses to uh, get into Iron Man's chest piece. Um, and then you have a relaxed palm. And a relaxed metal palm, and the and a trigger palm, and a um, human trigger palm, and the fist, and he's he's wearing the fist over there, um, and over here. We have a clawing arm. This can hold the shield, but um, I don't like him to hold the shield on the metal arm because I want to show the metal arm. Hot Toys keeps doing that. I don't like that. <laughs> I want to show the metal arm. Um, 
I looked at taking off the utility belt. It is not worth it. Not worth the trouble. So he's going to go in the box. And I'm going to just keep that one out. That's the only one I need. Still am undecided about the boots. They're not black enough. They're like a dirty... They're like a dirty gray. I, they're intended to be black, but they're just not black enough. Meanwhile, the other ones are so plain. I don't know. I feel like there's so many different shades of black going on with this figure that it's a little frustrating. Maybe I've just been staring at it too long. It does look cool, though. You know, I don't even know why I like the Winter Soldier. He kind of... He's kind of boring. Like, am I wrong in that he didn't really have a whole lot to do in um, the first Avenger? And when he died, um, I wasn't that familiar with Bucky. Like, I knew who Bucky was. And then when he died, I was like, wait, was that Bucky? <laughs> and then Captain America was kind of upset. Like, Captain America, the character, was upset. It didn't seem like the movie itself really cared about Bucky's death at all. Not until the Winter Soldier, when it was like he was the only one that died. And it's showing, it's showing pictures of them. And then you see flashbacks of them like being best friends. You get that part at the beginning, which I love. I love the first act of the, of the first Avenger. Um, but Bucky's death really just doesn't hit. I don't know why. It's, I don't think they did it a bad way. I just... It just... Um, yeah, I, I was listening to a review, and they said that after Captain America goes to rescue Bucky... It stops becoming about, the movie stops being about the characters and more about their fight against Hydra. And I think Bucky's death got kind of caught up in the fight against Hydra because they had to just keep going. And um, I, I know Captain was like upset you get that scene of him sitting and drinking. But like Bucky really didn't impact the, the story that well. And then later in Winter Soldier, it's like a big deal, but... Um, honestly, I couldn't get over the way Sebastian Stan's face looked. It looked weird with the long hair. So, um, whatever. But, um, Winter Soldier, I, I really liked him in that one. He was pretty scary. And, and then Civil War, obviously, I thought it was great. Despite him having no real arc other than knowing that he's dangerous. He knew he was dangerous at the beginning. Um... Yeah, he didn't really have a strong arc, but something about the aesthetic and the fact that he's sort of a victim, I like that. I like that a lot. Um, yeah, I like that a lot. And then, so, um, the, there's the one more thing here. There's the gun. The gun is cool. Let's compare it to... The Winter Soldier gun. So put it over here. It's got kind of an angled magazine there. I don't know what this gun is called. It has a few moving parts, like the back will come out. Um, and then it seems like this scope lifts here, but it, there's some resistance, so I'm not going to push it that hard. I'm not really sure. And then it's got a tripod here. Um, and the magazine can come out. I think that's it. And then here, you know, you have your gas canister. There was one in the magazine. There was one, I'm sorry, there was one inside the tube when uh, when you first got it, I, I believe. Um, that was cool. This one moves back. It's kind of just your preference. Um, this one has a shinier a me metallic look to it. This one's a bit flat. Um, so if he's going to hold one, I'm going to hold that one, but whatever, it's up to you, whatever you prefer. I don't, I didn't really buy him for the gun, to be honest. Um, and, uh, if you guys look at my YouTube channel, I know that I have some Coyote Crew movies that are just movies I make with me and my friends, but uh, if you look at Coyote Crew 5, it's actually a parody of Civil War. Um, and Coyote Crew 3 is a parody of Winter Soldier. So if you're into that sort of thing, have a look at it. Um... 
I appreciate all the likes on my The Dark Knight Legacy page on Facebook. I, I briefly mentioned it, and it seems like every day people are going to read it. It's a graphic novel that I wrote um, and made with using Hot Toys figures, custom pieces, and uh, um, the licensed figures. So that was cool. One last thing before we go is I'm going to show you the concept art for the Winter Soldier. All right. So here's some concept art. Um, you can see here he's got a pistol. I, I like that harness that he has, and he's got a rifle on his back. That would have been cool. Um, you can see that they captured the likeness there with the small jaw. You know, it looks chiseled, but it still is narrow. Um, look in here. I'm trying to get rid of the glare. Um, this is plain. I think this is the one we ended up with. It's just plain. Huh, the pants are covering the boots here. Yeah, here's the same one with both sleeves, which also looks cool. The fact that he's just an assassin and wears all black with these modern um, fashion, it that alone is like cool enough, especially if you add the mask. But the metal arm is also quite nice. Um, he's got ribbed sleeves here, sort of like the last Winter Soldier torso piece. Um, and then there's a red sleeve here that looks like the same color as his civilian outfit in that one scene in his apartment. But I think it's oh, the suit, the, the vest is over designed, so I don't like that one. Um, I'll read what they wrote here. This is uh, uh, who's talking? Ryan Meandering says, I've worked on Bucky's look since. Captain America the First Avenger, so I've been very interested in continuing to define the evolution of his look. Head of visual development, Ryan Meandering says. In this movie, he is in hiding, which meant stripping away the vestures of being a superhero and placing him in a casual setting. The jacket he rips the sleeve off to re reveal the silver arm is his look for the majority of the movie. It's slightly more heightened and is meant to represent a newer version of his Winter Soldier costume. Instead of having buttons running down one side of his torso, its design details are more squared. Um, I wonder if there's just like a, a deleted scene of him ripping the sleeve off. That would be kind of funny. It's like, why, why does he have to do that? I know why the movie needs him to do that, but why does the character need to do that? Just so people know, like, don't mess with me. I don't know. So those of you who follow me on Instagram at Agent Batman, you guys know that I recently read the lighting on my shelves, and so here is Winter Soldier as he stands with the rest of Team Cap. I have Hawkeye up there with my shield shelf. Maria Hill is in the back somewhere over there with Agent Coulson. And that's my uh, modified Black Widow. Um, you can see I did treat the hair back there with Scarlet Witch. She is, um, I, I made the hair straighter as much as I could. I just, I just poured some light water over it, and that's all I did. And then I kept the head wrap over her head, the one that comes in the box. Um, yeah, he looks cool here. There's Ant-Man in the back. You can see that hair crease. Kind of an eyesore, but I'm sure most people won't notice. Cap. Down here we have the Thor family. Down here we have some civilians. Some Mark Ruffalo. Um, I did buy the new uh, head from Kit Chen. The, um, the Civil War Tony Stark one that just looks good. So it doesn't seem to be a knockoff of anything unless that's what the new Mark 46 is. But um, we'll see. Here is the Guardians. Drax is coming out. I will be buying Drax just because I want the red pants. But I'm curious to see what they do for the second one. Um, I know for sure if, if they come out with Gamora and that blue jacket, I'm definitely replacing her because because of those arms. Um, and Rocket, if he has a better face, I'll replace it. I don't really care about the new vest color. Here's Tony Stark. And he will get a new head sculpt shortly. There's the vision. I've kind of got an opposites thing going, and uh, in my opinion, so you have Cap versus Iron Man. Next to him is Winter Soldier. I feel like his opposite on the other team is Black Panther, 
who I will get, but I ordered from Sideshow, so that's going to come, you know, when everyone else gets theirs. Behind him is Spider-Man, who is the bug guy, with Cap's bug guy, Ant-Man, whatever you want to call it, insect. Um, then there's the weird ones, Scarlet Witch and Vision. And then there are the best friends, Winter Soldier, sorry, not Winter Soldier, um, Falcon and War Machine. And I do plan to get War Machine. I don't know where I'm going to put them, though. And I will get Falcon, too. Um, and then I put Hawkeye and what's her name up there, so. Hulk and Quicksilver. Don't really know what to do with them. So they're on their own shelf for now. Um, here are some Fox Studio figures. Um, that, you know, Spider-Man Sony over there, but there's Magneto, Ian McKellen, and the Wolverine and Cyclops figures. And then over here I have some villains, Mandarin, Red Skull. The Red Skull is a custom. I have him on a knockoff body that makes him taller. Um, and I got rid of the undersuit. I gave him that 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 swastika over there. I think it looks cool. Um, Terminator. Rogue One Vader that I had before with Boba Fett and my two stormtroopers. Um, here's the Star Wars gang. I'm ready, f waiting for a return of Jedi Luke. Return of the Jedi Luke. Um, my goal was to have a Batman and purple suited Joker from every version. So I have the Keaton version, the Bale version. Here I was going to have Affleck and Leto, but I didn't really like Affleck's Batman except for that suit, and I hated Leto's Joker, so I'm not really sure what's going to go there. And then down here I have Leonidas, who I love, but it was supposed to be Arkham Batman, but now that since they invited Arkham Joker uh, or um, announced it, that's back on the table. So. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoy the review, and I hope you like looking at my collection. Follow me on Instagram at Agent Batman, and I'll see you guys for the Black Panther review.